Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is episode 63. Welcome, welcome. And this week, we're going to be talking a lot about black tanks, <laughs> fun stuff, uh, pressure washing black tanks, and a few other subjects. So stay tuned. Well, yes, I got to talk about black tanks here and so uh, fun, fun stuff. So what I need to explain to you is um, I really haven't had a whole lot of things going wrong with the RV, but I have had kind of a long-standing issue that I really have to address before we start traveling again. And it all started with the black tank valve handle. I, we started noticing it; it's not closing all the way. It always leaves about a little bit of about an inch before it goes all the way in so the first you know the, the rv is not that long old so i uh kind of suspected that it was probably something blocking it and so uh i finally talked to our friend todd who owns a rv a diverse rv repair and uh he uh, actually lives here in the rv park uh full-time and I finally decided I'm going to hire him to do a pressure wash to the black tank. <laughs> so um, if you don't know how that works, basically they take a snake type of item and goes up the backside of the uh, the hose of the, yeah, well, the septic tank hose. And would go through the front side too, through the toilet hole. And take a high pressure sprayer and, and clean out. Uh, the tanks and so what I did in advance was make sure that I flushed the tank over and over and over and over and over again we did about five or six times and fill the tank up flush it out fill the tank up I wanted to make sure I got as much stuff out of the black tank as possible but I do notice because I can't close that valve all the way I do get a slight trickle of uh, of, of liquid and so uh, it you know you just can't have that especially if we're going to travel in the future again so um, after I got done doing that Todd did come over with his high pressure he has a big trailer he carries on it has a big tank in it and uh, a pressure washer type of machine in his uh, trailer and then uh, uh, basically has a, a flexible head on it so it puts a special insert on the black tank hose and we start sending it up the backside so he was running 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 and we are getting some materials out and it definitely is cleaning the hose too while it's going up there and we but boy talk about on a montana trailer a lot of 90 degree turns and we have what's called the, a boom type of uh, uh septic pipe so it actually pivots out from the rv and it's about six feet long and it's an actual boom so that doesn't make anything any easier so most people have their connectors right at the rv ours comes through a boom and then it's a, a, through a six foot boom that swivels off the uh, rv and so that's just one more obstacle to get that thing up there and we clean 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 and we're finding no um nothing seemed to be you know, the valve itself that I was trying to free up material that might be blocking it uh, definitely uh, didn't fix it. So then Todd, uh, after we did all that, we went around to the front side into the RV, brought the hose in there, and you could hear the thing flopping around in the tank. And it was uh, really, we got it cleaned out really well. I mean, it was actually pretty clean in the first place. And that's not bad since it's a, almost a three-year-old RV. And uh, so we weren't getting a lot of materials out of there because Sherry and I, we constantly flush our uh, black tank. And uh, so anyway, so good cleaning. We uh, got a lot of the, uh, uh, you get kind of layers of uh, almost a film that's on the inside of the tank. Uh, that helped clean all that out stuff. So 
at least anything we got a peace of mind. And we also tried to do the gray tanks, but because of all the funny 90 degree turns and stuff, we could not get that snake thing to go the way we want. And I wasn't that worried about the gray tanks. So anyway, we got it all cleaned out and stuff, but did not fix my valve problem. So of course, you know what that meant. It means uh, uh, since I'm kind of, I mean, I probably could get through it, but I just I'm afraid of making mistakes uh, that are costly. So I hired Todd to actually. Uh, uh, we're gonna, you know, to, we're gonna have to fix that valve, <laughs> and so. Uh, so the next day, um, Todd uh, had a, kind of a slow week going, so he was uh, readily available. And so we decided we're going to dive into that. And in order to do that, we need to take out the uh, bottom section flooring or, or well, it's a protection. Uh, it's not the actual floor. <clears throat> um, that kind of hides the, everything. And then we have to drop that and then take a look and see how in the heck all this stuff works mechanically and I, and I actually learned quite a bit about how these valves work if you haven't been up underneath your RV to look how see how these valves work I was always thinking the push rod was a straight mechanical device that you pushed and pulled but it's actually a device just like a bicycle brake you know how your bicycle brakes you pull the handle and it's got a a cable and it moves and it goes to the other end and you can see the cable come out of it and it's pulling on the brakes the 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 stop your bike well it works the same way with these slides is these um uh they use a actual cable uh, from that uh, above down to the valve which has a special attachment to it to open and close the valve so it was kind of neat to see how that worked and so when we get in there we open up the bottom and we actually see two tanks and I know we have a gray tank we have a black tank up there so uh, that's what made it so hard for the snake to come in because the pipe came into a two a T actual T one T went to the black tank and the other T went to the gray tank so that's why we're having so much trouble trying to get the snake or the uh, pressurized hose to go up and clean things out. So it was pretty educational to drop that down and figure out how all that worked. So actually dropping the undercarriage part or the um, protection cover that you might want to call it uh, was actually pretty easy. Just remove some uh, bolts basically and it drops down. And so <laughs> the funny part is, is I, you know, I flushed the black tank over and over and over again because I, out of courtesy, you know, and you'll see the video, and we actually made videos on both the pressurized cleaning and and switching out the valves. Um, we, it was really good that I, I flushed those, uh, that tank out really well because we knew we were going to have to move the valve and that could get really messy. The other thing we did is we took the hydraulics and lowered the uh, hydraulics and then the nose of the fifth wheel pointed down so luckily the output valves are opposite of that so that also means if there's any remaining liquid in the black tank it most likely would stay in the tank when we open that valve up to replace it so boy I tell you if you're going to have that done what a nice thing to do is make sure you really clean that tank out the best you can and tilt your RV opposite of where the hole is or where the valve is going to be removed at and we had absolutely no liquid come out of the black tank however we were not real sure which tank was which so you know we went for the one that was closest to us and we started removing the valve and there was liquid coming out and it's like oh geez okay we're gonna have to open that and see how it goes and it's pretty much water you know coming out of it and it's actually doesn't look like septic it's actually gray water and it's like what and that's how we did kind of discovered that the two the t thing worked and turns out we had to take that valve off anyway because it's a t and so in order to take the other valve off at the other end uh to get some play in the pipe we actually had to disconnect it anyway so anyway so we disconnect the first tank it turns out to be the gray water and guess what rob didn't do I didn't drain the gray water out because I didn't have, didn't think that we'd be messing with that tank at all. So, oh boy, we had uh, gray water going all over the place, which is not toxic. And so 
uh, or a, a biohazard, so that's good. But it made it harder because now the concrete's wet and all that stuff. But luckily, this is Phoenix, so that stuff dries quick. So, you know, of course, anybody watching this is going, you guys are idiots. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, so once we discovered that we had the wrong valve, we had to go to the other side of the RV where the, you know, the T goes to the other side. And obviously, that's going to be the black tank. So Todd gets in there and uh, removes the bolts and stuff, and by golly, no, no leaking. <laughs> but guess what? We find, open that valve up, and he goes, found your problem. And it's like, really? Turns out there's some paper item caught in that, because the thing has a little sliding um, uh, flipper, you might say, that, um, and it's got these uh, gaskets on both sides. And if you... If your timing's just right and you close that valve and catch like some paper, and this could have been in there for a while, um, it can get wedged in there and uh, it won't come out. And that's what we were trying to, we we're hoping that the pressure washer would have found something like that, but it didn't. Anyway, it turns out we really had to take the two gaskets out and scrape it to actually get this material out of there. But that's what was keeping the valve from closing. So the good news was I didn't have to replace the valve. Bad news is, is I, <laughs> it was just embarrassing. It's like, oh God, you got to clean that. So we got that cleaned up, put the new, uh, put the gaskets back on, did some tests. I pushed and pulled on the one side, verified it was working just fine and closing all the way. That one inch gap I told you went away instantly. So um, takes a few trial and error to put that back on because your gaskets want to move and stuff. So. Um, you know, it was off and on a few times, doing some tests, eventually got it all put back together. And by gosh, I have perfectly, perfect operating black tank, gray tanks, the whole works, and did not have to replace the valve, which I kind of thought, you know, this RV is not that old. So uh, I was kind of glad to find out it's not from wear and tear. But um, boy, there's something to keep in mind is when you're draining your black tank, to really be aware of when you go to close that valve, that material could be in there. So, I you know I can't emphasize enough. If you have a flush kit or a flushing uh, connection to your black tank, to thoroughly try to rinse that tank out before you start closing valves, so you don't have material caught in the wave of that in the way of that shutter that closes um, and get and something could get wedged between the shutter and the uh, gaskets. So that was a real lesson learned and uh, wasn't a fun job to do. And luckily we had no real leakage and stuff, but you know, it's it's a black tank. And so anyway, you just kind of feel grody after you're all done to all doing that stuff. And plus, you know, you got someone messing with your RV that's, you know, not someone you know, and it's like kind of embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, but I, I, I got to say that the guy gave us, uh, well, Todd gave us lots of compliments. He says, you know, he's obviously worked with other people in their RVs and stuff. And this was a pleasant experience because we did things prior to, you know, making sure we flushed that tank and cleaned it out um, as best we can because just being courteous, it's like, I don't, you know, so I'd rather have my mechanic worried about working on the parts and fixing things than worrying about biohazard material. So um, he just was so pleased that it was, a, you know, for being a black tank fix, it was actually not bad at all and wasn't as unpleasant as it has been with other RVers that don't think about that kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope that's a lesson learned to you guys if you need to mess around with that stuff. Um, Sherry and I flush our tanks every week, um, heavy use or light uh, use. We're always using chemicals, and we had we didn't have the buildup in our tank that you know when we had liquid leak, leaking out too, you know, and um, and it was going out our pipe and stuff, but it wasn't going on the ground or anything. Uh, but uh, um, just keeping that routine up and 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 knowing you got to maintain those tanks uh will save you a lot of headaches in the future so 
clean them, flush them, clean them, flush them, and use uh, chemicals to keep them uh, breaking down things. And always use one-ply toilet paper that breaks down in water immediately. And we use the one-ply Scott. You can get that Scott, uh, Scott or Scotts um, uh, at any grocery store. And uh, you can always do a little test by taking a sheet of that stuff, put it in a glass of water, and soak it. And it should dis- pretty much disintegrate in the in the water when you expose it to water. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys in the future to maintain your black tank, use the right kind of toilet paper, use chemicals, and flush it regularly. And of course, I just can't get enough of the black tank fun. So of course, when we uh, decided to go up to Lake Powell for the weekend, Sherry sure, took a Friday off, so we did a three-day weekend. One of the main things we had to do up there was we had to flush the septic tank out on the boat. And so that's a little different process I've never done before. And so I thought I'd kind of tell you how that works. So just like uh, an RV, a boat has um, a marine toilet, takes water from outside, and uh, pumps the waste material into a tank now if you're in the ocean and you're three miles out and stuff boats have uh, what they call macerators and you could actually discard your septic out in open waters and stuff well obviously you can't do that in a lake like like powell so you have to have your tank pumped Uh, that would be so illegal just not not be funny and a big fine so how that works is you have a tank um uh, I would think it's about 25 gallons, and uh, <coughs> it comes out to the outside of the boat, and you have a cap, and it's a silver cap. You take the silver cap off, and you. Um, so we go to a special uh, island or a little special uh, dock that's designed for flushing tanks out, and they have a whole bunch of them there because all the houseboats and stuff. And so I pulled up, and we find out it's got this kind of cap type of thing that goes over a fitting, and then you uh, snap the two sides, and it locks onto your uh, your tank, and it sucks it out. However, we didn't have the little device to screw into the silver hole there that uh, has a little rubber thing that comes out, and they call it a nipple. And uh, if you've seen it, you can kind of see why they call it that. So like okay failed so we have to go to a marine store and find out how to get one of these nipple things that they call or a a septic uh, adapter they'll call it um, to be able to even clean our tank because now our tank's full and we can't even use it and if you're sleeping at night and you want to do your thing it's you know you have to get out of your boat get dressed again go all the way to the bathhouses and that'd be a pain so Anyway, so we uh, luckily at Lake Powell, the, on the docks, they have a marine, uh, a small marine store. So, you know, we took the cap off of the silver uh, cover that we have on the boat so we could size the threads, and we missed it the first time. So we ended up walking to the store twice to get the right size of this thing, but we did get one, and they only charged us like $13 for the adapter, so they didn't rip us off too bad. Anyway, so then we actually had to leave the dock again, go all the way around the marina, go back to that float where the uh, uh, septic tank pumps are. Got in there, and this time we put that adapter on, brought the little long hose that had this uh, uh, cap thing in there, and you put it over the nipple thing, and you pull the two sides down, it locks in, and you open up the uh, a little uh, uh, valve right there at the boat, and it starts pulling stuff out. It's like, whoa, piece of cake. Uh, so it's pumping out and all that stuff. And then finally, when you think it's kind of done, they have a set another hose that's uh, kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's about three feet of a extended nozzle on it that once you're done, you take that off, you put that in and pump water back into the tank. And so you can continue flushing your tank out a couple of times till you're satisfied that you think you've gotten all the waste out and so this did that once it was nice clear water coming out nobody really uses that toilet 
in a heavy way. <laughs> Usually it's more liquidy type stuff unless it's an emergency. Anyway, uh, so that was how that process worked. And that was easy, and it's a free service, uh, free dumping. Uh, and uh, I guess that's why we pay marina fees. And it went really well. So it seemed to me in the one week's time, it seemed like the black tank subject seemed to be hovering over our heads, but uh, we seem to have conquered it. So I'm really glad to have the RV fixed, the valve working properly, got the boat pumped out, know how that process worked. Not a, you know, It's not intimidating whatsoever. And I'm just glad that I don't have to mess around with any more black tanks for a while. Well, as you guys all know, and we've been telling you over and over and over, Sherry and I are down in Arizona and we made it through the summer, which is... You know, you've heard us complain about how hot it is and how hot it got. And it's starting to cool down. And now we have to do what I call the, the RV square dance uh, or the RV shuffle. And what's happening is we have some folks that are permanent here and we're kind of considered permanent right now. And so, uh, um, you know, the phenomenon of all the snowbirds are going to start working their way down Arizona here. So that phenomenon is starting to happen now. And so, uh, unfortunately, the bad part is sometimes uh, because we weren't considered permanent before, but we will be and we kind of have everything set in place. We, all the people that are permanent folks here the newer ones have to kind of do some shuffling to different spots some people had to actually move from one spot to another for four or five days and then move to another spot and then hang hang tight uh we got out of we that was the case with us but something changed where now we have to pack everything up slide, pull the slides in and move one space over <laughs> that's that's it one space over and uh, I guess that's kind of good because if anything gives me a chance to lubricate the slides again, kind of make sure that's all right, make sure all the systems are working, turning your wheels, uh, kind of make sure that you get kind of grease on them and stuff. It doesn't dry up. So, uh, you know, that little move, in fact, it'd be, I almost feel like I should go around like the little block and then come back just to make sure the, the uh, hubs or the... Uh, axles are getting greased up a little bit just by turning um so i do know my hydraulics are working fine because we had to i told you we had to adjust our our level uh when we we're working on the valves for the black tank so that's good to know so uh like today we do the actual our one space move which then after that will be there for a month of uh, three months then we have to go to another spot for three months and then we have a kind of a permanent spot a really good spot uh starting in april as long as we want it so if we have to be here we have to be here if not if not we'll just see what but we have to be prepared for that so anyway so um sherry and i are tonight actually we're gonna have to start you know sh figuring out we don't have to put everything away like we normally do because we're only moving <laughs> uh 20 feet away uh, and you guys also know that I put my canopy in my truck, so I was like, I don't want to take my canopy off. So Todd, the guy who helped me with my black tanks and stuff, he's going to move our rig tomorrow morning, and uh, hopefully it, sh it shouldn't be any big deal. So, uh, yeah, the old RV square dance is going on here, and so all the permanents or semi-permanents are shuffling around to accommodate all the uh, snowbirds and stuff that are coming in here and just today I've actually been watching some of the snowbirds come in and it's so weird because you know it's been you know maybe 15% full here all this time since April and now it's starting to see these rigs come in and it's like I didn't realize how how much we appreciated the peace and quiet we've had and uh, but it'll also be neat to meet new people and of course meeting more people and uh, is uh, gives us more stories to hear uh, of uh, other people's journeys and the other thing that's kind of fun to watch is I love to sit outside and don't tell anybody sit outside and watch people set up their RVs it's sometimes hilarious unfortunately you can definitely tell the folks that have been using RVs a lot or the ones that just use them once in a while because I swear one guy almost ripped out the backside of his truck this morning 
because he didn't lift the nose up enough on his fifth wheel and tried to pull forward to break free and and of course the feet are down on his fifth wheel and this thing's one of those uh landmarks pretty nice rig and he kind of drags it a little bit which is a good way to break your uh, levelers and um so then he stops and then they lift it some more but not taking the pressure off so once he lifted it and got the rest of the weight off the truck his sh truck literally shot forward about a half a foot it's like, oh my God, that was a disaster waiting to happen. But that was lucky nothing happened. So you can kind of tell, practice, you know, practice, practice, practice. And it's not worth, it's not something to laugh at, but it is something to observe is taking your time, thinking things through, understanding why things happen, and, uh, you know, just being careful. So. Anyway, that was a. Uh, it's been fun to watch these rigs come in. There's a lot more spaces to be filled up, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to have some great stories as time goes on here. So, <laughs> yep, it's beginning. The snowbirds are coming, and you know, and another thing I started noticing with some of these snowbirds coming in is they have newer rigs. <laughs> You know, you know how it is. It's the same with a boat, or if you buy a motorcycle, or you buy an RV. It always seems like someone's got a newer and a bigger one than you do, and uh, it's just so. Don't ever try to just get the biggest thing out there. So get what you like, because I can guarantee you, you pull up and you could have a monstrous RV, and the next person that shows up will have a bigger and better one or a newer one. It's just how it is. But those tend to be your uh, snowbirds that are still, uh, uh, some of them are still working and stuff like that and have a higher income and they can rotate their RVs more. And uh, I've noticed with folks that are um, settled down and stuff have uh, taken the, uh, they have more time to work in their RVs, keep them up. And uh, so like ours is three years old. There's other folks in here with much older ones that are uh, really good looking rigs, but they could be, you know, 10, 15 years old or if not older, and uh, they look as good as new. And that's because you just have more time, to, you know, you have more time to spend keeping that RV running well. And other people just trade them in every other year, you know, just like a car. And, uh, that's, you know, nothing wrong with that. But yeah, so I'm watching a lot of really shiny new fifth wheels so far coming in here and uh nice looking rigs and it's kind of interesting you can kind of see the differences in the different uh like levelers talk about differences in levelers um some of them are beefy other ones use light ones and you kind of like that doesn't look very reliable and there's other ones that look like they uh like the ones in our montana are beefy and they're uh um look like they can handle the weight and i'm watching these other ones with uh, like you know uh, hydraulic levelers that look like small pipes coming out and it's like that's a stabilizer um anyway so yeah it's just amazing to see all this different quality of different rigs and and uh, i guess you know you get what you pay for and that's unfortunate and of course the other thing is you know you got the locals that kind of you know the uh, ones that are here all the time we kind of have an appreciation for our rig or not a rig, but our park, and so we are constantly kind of maintaining it. And the one thing you always hear me bark about is uh, people maintaining the dog park and using their pooper scoopers and stuff. And so once you get kind of these new people come in in here, they don't have the appreciation for the RV park like we do because we have to be here all the time and we're constantly picking up after other folks. So the more that start coming in here, the more frustrating that gets. And uh, of course, you, you know, and then there's other folks that are kind of just cranky. And then uh, the other thing is people that don't can't seem to keep their noses out of other people's business. Like, I've never had any trouble, but I know like Chad and Val, when they were here, they had a set of tires that they got stuck with. And so they kept them on the side of the RV because they didn't have a place to put them. And they got complaints that someone had a stack of of, of tires next to the RV and it really was not an eyesore it's just someone that just had way too much time in their hands so you know that's what happens when you start getting a full park and I'm sure that uh, folks that are in full parks know exactly what I'm talking about but I guess Sherry and I have been very spoiled because it's been you know like I said 15 20 percent full 
all this time until now, and now we got to watch the evolution of more people and different personalities show up. And, um, you know, happy-go-lucky people and meet new friends, and then there's always a couple of those cranky people that they're just never happy. They're just always angry or always looking for something that's not right, and they have a standard of their own. And this park doesn't have like a, like a clubhouse or anything like that. So, um, uh, I don't know. So it's more of a independent park, individual people. Other than other RV parks down here are more like communities, and people come there because they go to dances and they have shuffleboard and all that stuff. That's not, not we don't have that here. So, but it's a very nice park. So I'm sure I'm going to have a few stories for you. I'm definitely going to have new stories for you as time goes on. And uh, I'll see if I can stay out of the limelight. Of course, uh, you know, I've got RV travel buddy all over my car. And I run. I have a flag up. This is, uh, it actually has a radio station, uh, RV Talk Radio. And so it's, you know, obviously, you know, uh, we get people that know us through that stuff. And so... Um, but it's usually a pleasant experience. But uh, if I meet any of these folks that are new with clever, you know, uh, interesting stories, uh, we're definitely going to interview them on the radio show. So anyway, times change, things change, nothing ever stays the same. You know that. So um, paradigms must be broken. Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the weekend that we had up at Lake Powell. We did a three-day weekend, as I said earlier. And the cool thing was they had what's called the Powell, Lake Powell Challenge, which is a weekend that all these high-performance boats show up. And the Lake Powell Challenge is also for um, raising money for charity. So it was really cool. But they had these boats, and these are like your cigarette boats and stuff that you're – I've heard about uh, a lot of them had uh, tri hauls and dual engines, and uh, I got to talking to a few of them. They love to show off their boats. It's like going to a custom uh, car show, and so they'll have their boats backed up, and they have the uh, back ends open, uh, lifted up, so you could see the engines and stuff. And they're just really pleasant to talk to. And uh, we actually talked to the person who had the fastest boat on the lake. And get a load of this. It went up to 180 miles per hour uh, top speed. I don't know if he actually did that on Lake Powell or not, but it's considered the fastest boat uh, from all the... It must have been at least 50 of those boats there uh, of all shapes and sizes. So when we went out in the bo boat, <laughs> these boats are screaming all over the place. And, and, and there was, they were fun to see. Of course, you know, there was no peace and quiet. Those engines are nasty loud but that's what it's all about so it's like going to a drag race show and just that's how it is anyway uh i also discovered trying to take pictures of high performance boats going by in your boat when you're rocking all over is almost impossible so it's really hard to get pictures of these boats screaming by so anyway we do have a video coming out showing a little bit of what we uh, were able to show you with the performance boats <laughs> it was really fun the other thing we had to do is get our cooling system or air conditioner on the boat to work and the way those work is basically it's a unit that sucks water from the through hull from the lake or ocean wherever you're at uh, pumps it into a little uh, 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 coils and then it blows air across it and that's creates cold air which that's how you cool your boat down so our boat has one of those but the person that had the boat before never used it because it wasn't necessary up in the northwest so sherry and i that was our biggest goal this weekend or last weekend was to get that fired up and running and so it was kind of funny because we didn't know what a through haul was so we thought the one through hole we did see found out that was the wrong one. It turned out to be in the engine compartment, way down below the engines and stuff. And it was really funny to watch two people, I'm a little uh, chunky, trying to reach that thing. Couldn't reach it. Sherry says, all right, let me in there. So she got in there and crawled and maneuvered her way into the engine compartment, found that valve way down the bottom, turned it. And then the other thing is you have to prime it. And the way you do that is got to figure out where the water comes out and then once you do that you spray water into that hole so it will prime the pump 
when it's running and then it'll create a section and pull water through and the whole system so it's working and that's exactly what we had to do we fired it up plugged it in turned on the circuit breaker and nothing happened it ran but nothing was coming through we primed it by you know spraying water into the other end by god you know it really it really did work and it primed it and it started working it's like woohoo so now the boat has air conditioning you say why would your boat want air conditioning but if you live down here those boats get really warm and so it's so nice to have the cool air uh in the boat especially the you know so we could get some sleep and stuff so uh yeah it was uh and that, and sailboats have the same thing they'll have what they call a, a water exchange type thing and it pulls water from there it goes through a water strainer so if you have gunk in the water or anything like that it goes through the strainer first and it doesn't clog up your systems and so once in a while you got to clean that strainer out anyway but yeah it works great we're really happy with that so we had a really wonderful weekend we also found out the cinder uh, will jump right off the boat and swim with shuri and us uh when we uh, go into the coves cinder had a blast we also tried a life preserver for our dog for cinder she thought that was kind of funky but once she kind of uh, got used to it she found out that she could swim out with us and stop and not have to paddle and she was still floating well and once she kind of discovered that it was actually even more fun for the dog because the dog usually have to kind of keep a momentum going and so with the life preserver keeps them kind of from their butt sinking <laughs> so anyway that was kind of fun we had a great weekend um i tell you i i've told you this before if you ever get a chance to go see lake powell and especially if you could get a, a one of their houseboats or something like that for a week uh it will be a vacation of a lifetime for you it's just so beautiful so yeah that's kind of what we were up to this weekend <clears throat> and then of course that week before we left it was all the black tank stuff that we we're doing so yeah, we've been kind of busy and all kinds of projects going on. And so uh, we'll be around next weekend. Got, uh, we got to move this RV like we told you. And, and uh, we'll see what comes up. But, uh, yeah, I, um, I got a feeling we're going to be meeting a lot of new people. And it also reminds me of uh, something I bought for the boat. And I was kind of curious if you guys ever had one of these before. But I bought one of those portable DVD players. And... Uh, it was around a hundred bucks. I got it at Best Buy's, and uh, we uh, watched uh, Jungle Book, and uh, now you see it, see me, uh, too. Uh, both were really good movies, by the way. <laughs> but I noticed that the sound speakers on those aren't very good, so I was just curious if any of you folks out there have ever bought one of those portable DVD players. and noticed the same thing. So I'm thinking uh, that you know how you can get the little. Uh, uh, PC speakers that you can get for your laptop and stuff like that if I should try to get a set of those for my portable DVD player so we can get a little better sound and so anyway uh, yeah that was it worked great the picture was fine it's a ten and a half inch screen and uh, perfect for this you know throwing a movie on and if you want to watch it in the boat uh, but I was disappointed that it was kind of hard to hear and I don't think it was age, <laughs> but it could have been. But yeah, um, let me know what you uh, what you guys know about those. I appreciate it. And of course, there's one more thing I wanted to follow up from the last show. We talked a lot about online jobs, and so I have a resource in the description that's called uh, Legit Jobs Online, which is a very good ebook and um, um, organization that will help you find online jobs if you're interested in them so if you look in the description of this podcast uh, right under the link of rv talk radio you'll see i put a link in there of an ebook that's available to people um, uh, that's in a service that's interested in finding out more about legit jobs online so check it out just you can pause this real quick Go look at the description. Go down below. Click on the link. See what you think. It's a great resource to help people out that are looking for online jobs that might work out good for traveling. So anyway, I hope that's a helpful, helpful link to you. Uh, we've had folks use that before, and it's been a great resource. We also included a work-at-home opportunities ebook and uh, resource below that link. 
and both are very helpful for finding online jobs. So check them out. You know, you never call, you never write, we never hear from you. And I'm asking you, hey, take the time to send us a note (laughs) so you get a chance. On rvtalkradio.com, please go to the website, go to the contact page and shoot us a note to say hello or tell us what you'd like us to talk about. Or if you have questions about me and Sherry and uh, our RVing or even our boat stuff and outdoor activities, uh, let us know. Everything we do is actually from full-time RVing. So if uh, you hear us talk about other subjects, don't be Twitter-pated about it because we tend to uh, tell you things that we're doing because we are full-time RVers. Uh, you can also email me directly, if you like, at rob at rvtalkradio.com and uh, shoot us a note. And we have two web well, not websites, but two uh, Facebook pages that you can go to that all you have to do is go to the message button at the top. One's for RV Talk Radio. Just go to the Facebook and uh, you can just type that in the description and search us and you'll find us. And go to the message button at the top and that's private, but it comes right to our cell phones and we uh, we might answer you right away. The second place is our um, RV Travel Buddy has its own Facebook page. And it's getting, uh, we got over 9,000 people there. So it's getting kind of big. But yeah, feel free to uh, contact us there. But just go up to the top of the page, go to the message button, and shoot us a note. And uh, give us ideas or subjects you'd like us to talk about. If we don't feel like we're expertise in it, we will find you or direct you to people who can uh, help answer that. Or maybe we'll even interview somebody that will pertain to that subject if you really come up with something that... Uh, is mind-boggling. So, yeah, uh, we do. We we do. Uh, one is we we are growing every week, and I I want to thank you, the listener, for that. And we ask you to please tell people about us, and uh, your feedback also directs the way that we do the show. Um, we kind of focus it uh, this radio show on. RV lifestyle or RV living and we're not so much as uh, we do talk about RV tips and products and services but we do them as we get exposed to them Uh, but it's more about the lifestyle and uh, there's a lot of shows out there and I've talked about those before that uh, uh, we very much admire Uh, and they tend to be more um, mechanically inclined or type of folks or came from that industry and so uh it's like i'm not going to reinvent the wheel just like uh this this fall (laughs) mark my words when it comes to videos and also probably podcasting everybody's going to talk about winterizing your rv and there's going to be 20 30 40 50 videos all about winterizing your rv which is the same stuff they did last year which is what they did last year before that and it just goes on and on and on all the time and so we uh, are trained not to do the same stuff all over and over. So that's why we try to be a little different. And uh, we've also tried to stay with the lifestyle and what you can do from this lifestyle. So anyway, that's uh, uh, a little bit defining us once again. And I also just love to hear from you guys. So shoot us a note. We love, uh, we love the feedback. And if we get criticism, we ask you to please be polite. Um, and uh, we will respectfully listen, uh, read your comments and, and uh, find a way to improve ourselves if there's something that we're doing that's not proper or could be better. So anyway, I appreciate that. So, moving on. Well, it's been kind of interesting uh, uh, watching the different kinds of RVers come in and out as time goes on. Now, it's kind of funny when you get the folks that kind of are full timing and staying at places for long periods of time um, it's interesting to find how helpful uh, you become a family with all the different people who have been here for a while and then uh, like for example I was telling you earlier that there's a rally going on here for the, uh, I think it's Hartman Company rally that people that make the uh, landmarks uh, Sun Dancers and Bighorns they're having a rally here so these 
RVs are coming in, <laughs> and that explains why a lot of them are new, I guess. And uh, they're starting to roll in right now, and I, I find them kind of interesting because uh, I've talked to some of them, and it's like they chase each other all over the country to go to the same rallies. And uh, I I think that's great. I, I think uh, Sherry and I aren't kind of like groupies very much, so uh, it's kind of hard to comprehend. But I imagine you could really get some really good friendships and have some fun and and uh, I guess after this rally, they're having another rally up in uh, uh, Las Vegas. And uh, I guess that's even a bigger one. And I, I, I guess I've never been much of, of a uh, follow the herd kind of people. Um, Sherry and I are, tend to be a little more independent and kind of our friendships and people we meet tend to be more personal. And uh, But yeah, it's really interesting to see uh, the different kinds of RVers coming through. now. Typically, what I'm seeing is these are folks that are retired, um, and they uh, have the time to do this, and it's kind of like a club following thing. And every one of them I've met so far have definitely been of retirement age. Uh, nobody young yet, but uh, it'll be interesting to see in the mix as a few more rigs come in. To, uh, but I'm seeing just kind of one kind of class of people, and they tend to be seniors. And... Uh, uh, maybe that's why Sherry and I have not really been a rally kind of uh, 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 membership kind of people. We tend to like to be independent because we're, we're really not in that age bracket yet. So uh, I'm sure that's something we'll probably enjoy, and I, I'm certainly not saying there's anything wrong with it. Uh, but it's just interesting to see this kind of version of RVing come through here. Uh, like I said, most of the time we see people using their RVs as a tool or a resource, as these folks are doing it, as a retirement fun type of thing. And then most of them look like they're actually snowbird type of people. So, yeah, it was kind of fun to watch them come in. And uh, they've all been very charming. Uh, and uh, you can kind of tell they're, they don't use their RVs a lot because it's kind of entertaining to watch some of them bring their rigs in and... Um, Nothing bad or anything like that, but you can just tell someone has not uh, handled their RV a lot. And so uh, a lot of mistakes are made, but nothing critical. But uh, uh, it's just uh, interesting. Um, <laughs> I just like to watch it. So, uh, yeah, uh, I guess I want to say welcome to, uh, I think they're called the Hartman Company. I'm not, um, that make the uh, landmark RVs, Bighorns. And sun dancers is what I've been seeing. So I'm not real familiar with that company because you know what we drive. <laughs> we we pull a uh, a Montana and we love ours. So uh, I guess I, I if I was had a chance to go to a Montana rally, I'd probably go to one. Um, we talk a lot about our Montana and we've been very happy with it. So, but I don't know if I'd want to go to every rally. <laughs> but that's just that's just being sherry. I uh, also uh, want to remind people, and, and don't be shy, um, but uh, if you're interested in, in being on our show and like to be interviewed for something that you're doing that's RV related, um, or you have an RV and it's allowing you to do something um, unique, uh, feel free to contact us. And if you'd like to be on the show, and uh, we don't mind advertising your websites, products, or services if it's uh, a good service. I don't want some con person trying to uh, sell some weird product or stuff, but I, I really don't. If there's a good product out there or a good service or or a channel that you're trying to, uh, your own blog channel or something, and you want to uh, have a little kick uh, in uh, subscriptions and stuff like that, uh, please feel free to contact us. We get kind of busy, and so we, I don't pursue a lot of folks. A lot of them um, we kind of run into, and, it, and it's like, and then at the last minute thing, I go, oh, gosh, would you like to be on our show? <laughs> and I, I forget. So um, if you'd like to be on RV Talk Radio or interested in talking about a product or service or your, or your channel, and it's a, a wholesome kind of family channel type thing. We'd be happy to have you on the show. So don't be shy and you're not, don't be embarrassed to contact us because we're human, you're human, and we don't necessarily, you know, 
see all the channels and all the blogs out there and, and we discover new ones every day and it's like wow i can't believe i haven't seen this before even if their blog's been going for three or four years so yeah contact us we don't mind and of course last but not least i want to spend a, at least a minute here and and, and I, I do want you to know how much we appreciate you We've had so many nice comments and lots of people saying that they really uh, look forward to our episodes. You never know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> I have no idea what the subject will be next week. <laughs> um, and uh, I think I want to talk a little bit more about online internet marketing and stuff like that in the future. I'll uh, tell you more about that. I kind of went over the basics of it, but it's much deeper than that. And so if it's something you want to get into, I'll be happy to... Uh, elaborate on even taking what I told you about and taking the next steps and you've got to be bold in the, and once again that passion thing I was talking about but I do want to just reassure you folks how much we appreciate you and uh, uh, some folks have come in here and they, they'll think that we're a lot like a uh, uh, RV tips show and, uh, and and now they're discovering we're more like an RV lifestyle show and uh, so I, I've been trying to kind of repeat that a little bit on a couple of the episodes now so people know and can relate to the fact that we're talking about the lifestyle and not just me and Sherry's but other people's too so uh, yeah um, we uh, we've seen our growth we've seen nice comments coming in and uh, I just want to reassure you we are grateful and we are thankful well hey guess what the uh, hour is almost up I can't believe how fast this goes um, golly uh, next week I think uh, like I told you I was going to talk a little bit uh, about web marketing and uh, online jobs a little more don't forget in our description we have some links to some really good materials that we've uh, uh, there is a cost to them but um, they've turned out to be very good materials and, and people have enjoyed them and helped them uh, with finding online jobs that might be fun after retirement or another way of making income um, on the road so uh, yeah check those out down below in the description and uh, Sherry and I are kind of sticking around for this weekend so we'll be uh, in the Phoenix area and we are uh, kind of, uh, we got some things we want to buy for the RV. We'll tell you about some products we're getting. Uh, we have to put uh, new tire covers on because the sun is just brutal over here. And we had these really small ones that kind of didn't fit the tires too well because you heard that, you know, we blew the tires and I changed our tires out and they're a little bit bigger. So we got to go to Camping World and we're going to get a little bigger tire covers and some other things that we need for the RV. And, uh, talk about uh, uh, some of that equipment that we are getting so I want to thank you very much for listening we appreciate you and uh, we ask you to stick around next week uh, next Monday will be on episodes episode 64 <laughs> I'm tripping over my tongue today so anyway uh, uh, I want to ask everybody to be safe Please take the time to tell people about our, our station, share our videos or share our podcast. Uh, make sure you like them on the Facebooks and things like that. We really appreciate your help. It helps us out. And uh, uh, if you decide to become a patron in the future, uh, we also will be doing special gifts and special uh, videos just for patrons. And so it's kind of a way of a special thank you for folks that do that for us. So once again, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Be safe, be friendly, and be an RVer. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.